Hey guys, I hope you're doing well. Uh, in this class, we are going to learn about microorganisms and we are going to stick to the syllabus. But for your extra knowledge and information, make sure that you check out the bonus content. So just take a look around yourself, your phone, your laptop, your hands for that matter. Are they clean? Really? Are they? According to Wikipedia, there are 1,000 to 100,000 bacteria living on each clean tooth. And there can be up to a billion bacteria on an unclean tooth. So remember that the next time you decide to eat that pancake before brushing your teeth. So what exactly are these microorganisms? Just like the name suggests, Microorganisms are those that are so small in size that they are invisible to the naked eye or even the eye that wears thick glasses for that matter. So to see these microorganisms, what you need is a microscope. This is the reason they're called microorganisms or microbes for the matter. So now these microbes are divided into four major groups. Bacteria. Bacteria is the oldest known life form on earth and it was discovered by Antony van Leeuwenhoek when he was looking at the scrapings from a human mouth under a microscope. A bacterium is just made up of a single cell. While most bacteria are good by aiding digestive processes and keeping the environment clean, there are some types of bacteria that can cause harmful diseases like tuberculosis, cholera and typhoid. They also cause diseases like citrus canker in plants. And then you have lactobacillus, the bacteria that helps you turn your warm milk into that thick curd. Fungi. Although the usage of fungi dates back to prehistory, where two species of mushroom were found in the 5,300 year old mummy of a prehistoric man, the first publication is considered to be done in 1729 by Pierre Antonio Michelli. There are supposedly more than 100,000 species of fungi. So when you first hear fungi, you're probably thinking about mushrooms, right? Yes, mushrooms are fungi and you eat mushrooms. But not all mushrooms are edible. If you find one in the woods, chances are it is poisonous. Fungi also have medicinal uses. You must have heard about penicillin antibiotics that fight bacterial infections. These are derived from the penicillium fungi. And also, you must have heard of yeast, which you have probably used in the kitchen that helps you in baking breads and cakes, right? You could actually try this yourself. Take some warm water, mix some yeast in it, and then add some sugar, and then use this mixture to beat the dough, to mix the dough. If you leave the dough for one or like two hours, it rises, it almost doubles, more than doubles usually. How does this happen? Yeast consumes the sugar and reproduces rapidly, giving out carbon dioxide during respiration. The bubbles of this gas fill the dove and give the rice. And when you do this, did you notice any smell? That is the smell of alcohol as the sugar has been converted to alcohol by the yeast. This process of conversion of sugar into alcohol is called fermentation. Yeast is also used in the production of alcohol and wine. It is grown on natural sugars present on grains like wheat, rice and the like. Protozoa Protozoa are also single-celled organisms which prey on bacteria and other food sources. While amoeba and paramecium are most commonly called out, there are said to be about 30,000 species of protozoa. Here is a movement of amoeba. Yes, that's how it looks under microscope. Algae. Phytoplanktons provide the food base for most marine food chains. The uses of algae 
range from biofuels that equal or beat the cost of fossil fuels to being used as fertilizers, soil conditioners and even as livestock feed. But there is something called an algal bloom. An algal bloom is where there is a rapid growth of algae. So what you see here is a picture of Lake Erie. The, this discoloration of water is due to an algal bloom. While a bloom may not be harmful by itself, it causes disturbances in the marine ecosystem by blocking sunlight, causing a depletion of oxygen levels in the water, and depending on the organism, even secreting toxins into the water. This process of excessive algal growth and depletion of oxygen is called eutrophication. Now, the last thing we're going to talk about is viruses. You might be wondering why didn't we cover viruses yet? Why didn't we call it in the four? So viruses are also microscopic, but they are a little different from the others based on how they reproduce. They need a host organism. They cannot multiply without a host. And this host can even be another microbe, like another bacteria. And viruses display a wide diversity of shapes and sizes called morphologies. In this picture, we see the icosahedral adenovirus. And here comes the chickenpox virus, where you can notice the lipid envelope and here's the most common influenza virus and then the deadly deadly ebola virus viruses can also cause diseases in plants like yellow vein mosaic in okra so now we have seen that microorganisms may be single cell like bacteria some algae and protozoa or multicellular they exist in all types of environments, deserts, springs, basically everywhere. And you already know that they are present in the human body and every other living creature. And we have also seen that some of them are useful, some of them are harmful, some cause diseases. These microbes are called pathogens. The others spoil food, clothing, leather, etc. Coming to pathogens, they enter the body through food, water, air, or even physical contact. These microbial diseases are called communicable diseases. And then we have something called carriers. These organisms themselves may not be affected by the pathogen, but they harm humans. A common example is the housefly. Let's say the housefly sits on a garbage can. That's when the pathogens stick to it. And then if it sits on your food, the food gets contaminated and the person who consumes the food falls sick. Another example is the female Anopheles mosquito, which carries the parasite of malaria plasmodium. The female Aedes mosquito also carries a dengue virus. Now what can we do about it? All we can do about it is just stay clean and let not have water stagnate in our surroundings. Now what is food poisoning? The microorganisms that grow on our food produce toxic substances, sometimes. This is why it is important to preserve food when you want to consume it over a period of time. The chemical method is to add preservatives like sodium benzoate and sodium metabisulfate these are common and used in jams and squashes to prevent spoilage. The other common preservatives are common salt, sugar, oil and vinegar. And of course, then you have hot and cold treatments. This is why milk is actually boiled before it is stored. The boiling kills the microbes and the cooling down, the cool temperatures inhibit their growth. In pasteurization, milk is quickly heated to 70 degrees for about 15 to 30 seconds and then suddenly chilled and stored. And then you also have the way the goods are packed by making the containers airtight also helps in preservation. Next comes 
nitrogen fixation and nitrogen cycle. There is about 78% nitrogen in the atmosphere, but it cannot be used directly from air. Certain bacteria and blue-green algae present in the soil fix the nitrogen from the atmosphere and convert it into usable compounds for the plant. This nitrogen is then used by the plants and the, then the animals feeding on those plants. So when again the plants and animals die, the nitrogen in them is fixed by the bacteria and then in the soil it is converted back for the plants into usable nitrogen compounds. Again, this whole process is referred to as nitrogen cycle. Rhizobium bacteria is a typical example. It forms a symbiotic relationship with the legumes, fixing nitrogen from the air, acting as a natural fertilizer. The plant in turn provides the bacteria with organic compounds made by photosynthesis. So this is all about microbes. I hope you have found this informative. If you are interested to learn out of syllabus, make sure you check out the other science videos on the topic. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this informative. And if you have an exam coming up, I wish you the best.